Hello, hello gamers, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is First in Flight by Artana and Genius Games. This is a one to four player game that's ages 12 and up and takes roughly about 45 to 75 minutes to play. And in the game First in Flight, well, you're going to be one of the famous people to start creating the aeroplane. You could play as the Wright Brothers or Therese Pialtier or quite a few others, in fact, and you're going to be basically crafting a deck of cards that simulates a flight. You'll have an opportunity throughout each round to take a flight or flights to get as far as you possibly can. This game has four rounds, and the idea is to build your deck as best as you can, to fly as best as you can, one time, further than anybody else. If you can hit that uh, wonderful 40 mark, that will end the game. Everybody will have an extra flight to try and see if they can beat you. Or, if not, at the end of the fourth round, whoever has just gotten the farthest in any of their flights is the winner. We'll take a look at this game, how to set it up, how to play, and then, of course, what I think about first in flight. While this is a larger game in the hour category, uh, the setup is actually quite simple. The first thing you do is you take the main game board out and decide what side you're playing on. If it's one to three players, you'll play on this side, and on the four player game, you'll flip it over. And the way you determine that is on the top left hand side, you'll have little spots, or like semicircles, and you will have three spots for the three or less, and four for the four player one. Then, decide how many players you're playing with. If you're playing with a one or a two player game, you're going to use a dummy character, which is included in the game box, and it has a little two or uh, one symbol on the top left hand corner that will determine that's the character you're playing against. Uh, then each player is going to get a color. So I'm going to be playing as the Wright Brothers, and I'm going to be the blue character, so I'm going to get a blue plane and a blue character. I'm also going to get a player board and the Wright Brothers card. I'll set that card face down onto the game board next to the plane, and I'm also gonna make sure that the yellow side is facing down. The yellow side has yellow borders. The blue side just has kind of wings here. Additionally, each player is going to get a descend card. This is a card you'll use during flight, just before you end, and you're going to be getting a deck of playing cards. Uh, the deck of playing cards you're going to be getting is an experience card, four basic flight cards, and you're also going to get four of the more difficult uh, flight problem cards. These are like kind of the upgraded flight problems. And you'll take this deck of cards and you'll shuffle it to create a nine card deck. This will be your flight deck to start the game off, but of course you will be changing it as you go along. After it's shuffled, place it somewhere next to you, and then let's set up the main game board. You're going to take each of your players and put them down in one of the semicircles or half semicircles, with the first player in the back and the, the last player in the front. Based on that order, you're gonna get a number of coins. I believe it's five, six, and seven or something along those lines. And you're going to give those to each of the players. If you're playing with a computer player, you're not going to give them any currency. They don't need money. They just function all by themselves. They're, they're self-starters, what can I say? Uh, you're also going to take the planes of each of the characters, including the PC player if you're playing with one, and put them in the bottom middle of the board where all the little planes are, just below the flight, which has a number of one to show you where you start. There are three decks of cards you'll be playing with, the yellow, blue, and green deck. These are going to be active, or passive abilities or flight active abilities that you'll be utilizing throughout the game. And as you pick them up, there's no limit to them, but you're going to be placing the decks down after they're shuffled and dealing out two yellow to the left-hand side top portion, two blue to the bottom left-hand side, and four green on the far right-hand side of the board. Final thing you're going to be doing is you're going to be adding the experience deck somewhere within reach of all players, the basic flight deck, which are all going to be just flight cards that have the value of one on the top left, the basic flight problems, which are also going to just have a value of one on the top left, but they are red and they also come with a little explosion counter, and then finally the two main decks. There's going to be the flight problem, like upgraded version of the deck, and then there's also going to be the upgraded version of the basic flight deck. Those are shuffled, but they are set face down because they all have different values and different things that happen to them. After you have done that and everybody's got their coins, their board, their planes all set up, you're pretty much ready to go. Uh, take the last thing you need to do, which is place the little time marker on the one to symbolize that it's the first round of the game, and now begin. So how do you play first in flight? Well, the first thing that you need to know about this game is that it is a rondelle game. A rondelle game is basically... Uh, for the most part, games that have kind of a circular board, and you're going to be going around them. The person in the back is always going to be the first player. So after somebody moves that is in the back, the next player who is in the back is going to have their turn. 
On your turn, you're going to take your character that is in the back, and you're going to place it anywhere you want on the rondelle that is ahead of the person in first, the person that is ahead of anybody else. You can choose the space right next to them, or continue from there. Now, as a good rule of thumb, you always want to usually place within one to three spaces of that player, and all that kind of exp be explained later. But yeah, you'll take your character and you'll place it down on one of the spaces, the little circle spaces. There's also little time counters on the board here, but we'll ignore those for now. Once you've placed your character on the space, you'll do what the space says. There's a variety of different spaces that are going to do for different things in the game, which I'll cover right now. First things first is upgrades. Upgrades will let you spend currency to draw cards from the upgraded deck and put them into your deck. Now the rule of thumb with upgrades is you have to at least spend two coins to draw two cards and put them into your deck. Additionally, you're always going to take an upgraded flight problem and secretly put that into your deck. So you won't know what that is, but you will know what the regular upgrades are. If you want to spend more currency, you can. So instead of spending two to draw two, you can spend four to draw four and choose two. So more money will get you more choice, but not more cards. And you're always going to take one of those upgraded flight problem cards as well and secretly put it into your deck. Uh, additionally, there's the next space here, which is going to let you take blue or yellow cards that are either face up or the cards from the top of that deck, and you will be able to place them on the side of your game board. There's a little symbol on the top right hand side or middle side of your game board that has spaces for these cards. The yellow ones are heroes. These are basically going to do one unique thing that you can do once every time everybody goes around the board. The bottom left hand side are basically passive abilities that say that when you do this thing, you get this thing. Whenever you take a flight, gain two coins. And the green cards are flight actions. These function like heroes, where heroes work once in the round and they focus on the rondelle, whereas these ones here, you can use once every time you take a flight, and they'll do things like letting you look at the top cards of your deck, putting cards in the bottom, or even preventing yourself from suffering any problems while you're trying to push your luck. The next one here is the repair function or coins. You can either take two coins or you can repair. Sometimes you're going to have repair uh, spaces or you're going to have repair spaces on your game board and sometimes you'll have cards there, the upgraded problems, which you can spend the money to get rid of that card to take a basic flight problem put into your deck. You'll never lose flight problems, but you can make them less dangerous. You have the any space, which will let you do literally anything on the game board as long as you pay the cost. And then you have the uh, experience and or flight card. You can either take a regular one flight card from the deck and put it into your deck, or you can take the experience, which is this guy here, which will give you a one value. And every time you draw it, you'll be able to take another one from the, the flight deck there. There's also just simply choosing to do the green. Um, and then the last thing, but not least, other than just getting more money, is the flight. How the flights work are pretty simple. Whenever you start a flight, you'll untap any green cards that you have. These are tapped, these are untapped. And whenever you tap them, you'll be able to do the ability at any point in the flight before you play your landing. This is where the push your luck comes into this rondelle game. My deck is then shuffled, and then after it is shuffled for the flight, you're going to set it down and you're going to flip over cards, kind of like Mystic Veil. And you'll flip them to the right hand side of the deck. Whenever you come up with a card, the top left is going to have a number. That's how far you got on this flight. The bottom portion of the card is going to be an action that is going to have to be performed. And if it is one of the upgraded negative cards, which most likely it will be, you're going to read it and do what it says. And you will keep going. I got a one. I got a one. I got a one. Now I got another one. Now, as you can see, additionally, each of these red cards have little explosions on them. If you ever trigger four explosions, your flight is going to end. So you have to be careful as to how many cards you pull from your deck. You can pull as many as you want, but the moment you hit four explosions, your flight is over and you're just going to move that many spaces. Now, the reason you don't want to bust is because instead, which is what you're supposed to do, is you can choose to land. At any point in your flight, you can stop drawing cards from your deck and you can play the landing card. But remember, your flight's still not over. You actually have to land, which means you'll have to draw two additional cards from the deck and hope that you do not crash. Crashing is the same way as just drawing cards. If you ever hit those four explosions, that will end you. So you want to make sure that you do not draw more than four explosions, or more than three, I should say, four you bust. If you bust while you're descending, instead of getting five uh, flight points, you're only going to get two. If you look at the card, there's a five symbol on the top, meaning that you landed correctly. And then the bottom is a two, meaning that you landed incorrectly, but you'll still get the points. You'll tally up all the value from all the flight cards, and then you're going to move your marker, that is your plane, across the flight track here. 
2 plus the 5 is 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. I'll take my character and I'll move him to the 11 spot. After that, you can take any of your malfunctions that are not the basic ones and you can put them down in this area here on your game board. This is where you're going to be able to repair them to remove them and replace them with a basic flight problem. If you choose not to do that, you're just going to shuffle whatever is left or all of the cards into your deck so that you can utilize them again for the next flight. Make sure you take your landing card and put it somewhere within reach that is never inside your deck. It's larger than your deck, so you'll never really have to worry about that. And that is how the flight works. Uh, but yeah, basically, you'll take one of these actions, you'll move your character across the board onto a space and do the action. The next player in the back will move and place in a space and take the action. And that's just how the game is going to go. You'll just keep taking these guys and moving them across the board. Once somebody reaches the very end of the game board, they're going to go into the space. The first player to reach it will be in first for the next round and second and then third. Additionally, they're going to then untap everything that was tapped, whether it be the ones per round or flights or whatever it is. And you'll score not victory points necessarily, but coins for getting the farthest on a flight. So if at the end of the game, or the end of the round, I should say, you have an 11 and nobody else is higher than you, you'll take the first, pli price, pri uh, first place prize cash, which is seven points. And you'll take those from this little bin here and add them, which you can then utilize to upgrade your deck, to increase your benefits that you're gonna be using throughout a flight, et cetera, et cetera. Another thing to note too is, while you can perform multiple flights in this game, you are always going to be left with whatever your best flight was. So if you have a flight worth 10 and a flight worth 15, you're not gonna add those up and get a flight of 25. You only actually got 15, which means that you're always gonna stay at the 15 marker. Speaking of 15 marker, when you hit there, that's the yellow space, you'll notice that your card on the back, that is your character, has a yellow border, which you can now flip over and gain the benefits of that card. Could be a passive or an active ability, just read the cards and see what they do. The Wright brothers simply say that when they're flying, if they beat their previous record, they're gonna score extra coins and cards from the basic flight deck. So getting them pretty far is important and there's ways in which you play each of the characters. After the first round, you'll do it again, and then again, and then again. After you've done it four times, the game is gonna end. And whoever has gotten the farthest on this track here that is the flight, you are going to determine that as the winner. If somebody manages to hit 40 or higher in a flight, then each player, including that player, will have an opportunity to fly one more time, trying to beat that player's record. If no one beats them, they win. Otherwise, if somebody does, they're the winner of the game and it's gonna end. They'll be first in flight. Okay, what do I think about it? Okay, so a caveat first. I like to do these guys before we start what I think. And the first caveat is the dummy player. How do you use them? Well, dummy players are easy. They are placed on the game board with their plane and their character and they function just like a normal player. If they are the last player, uh, or first, yeah, the last player in line, AKA the first player to take their turn, they are going to just move one to the closest space going clockwise. That's always how they're gonna work. They can never go on the same space as another player, just like everybody else, and they must perform the action. However, the action will be different. The action is gonna be on their card here. So this will say, for instance, if it lands on a flight space, you're gonna go ahead and move this character's plane three spaces. Or if it lands on one of these, uh, uh, any spaces, oh, you can make discard a matching card of a specific type of deck or whatever. Like, these basically tell you what they do when they land on these spaces. And if they land on a space that doesn't have anything on it, um, that, as one of these things here, then they're just going to do nothing. So that is how they work. Uh, only difference really with these guys, other than following this card here, is that you're never gonna like go three and then, and then that's gonna be as far as you go if it says three again. You actually will just keep moving this guy along. So he'll slowly get better and better as the rounds progress, moving himself throughout the game board. So he's gonna be kind of a passive character that slowly challenges you to get your deck stronger. Okay, that's how you use that guy. So what do I think about the game now? Firstly and foremost, what I like about this game is that it is a push your luck, deck builder, and a rondelle. And I love all three of those mechanics. The rondelle is very simple, and each of the different spaces is easily explained. I can just place my character, look at the board, and know what it does. It says blue or orange, and it says $3. Oh, I spend $3, I get a blue or an orange card. The next one here says $2, or repair icon for $3. Okay, I can get two bucks here, or I can repair one of the pieces in here 
for $3. The little flight symbol is to fly, the any space is to do anything, etc, etc. They're really straightforward, which is nice. It's not super difficult to explain this game to somebody when it's your first time playing it, and it has a lot of different mechanics that make them get a little taste of all of them, the pushing your luck, the deck building, and the rondelle aspect to it. Your deck is going to start off with four random negative problems in it, and these guys are going to have different things, little explosion symbols, they might be a little more costly and whatnot, and your ability to like formulate your deck is really cool. Now, unlike Mystic Veil vale and some other deck builders, there's no way to get rid of cards in your deck necessarily, other than your upgraded problems. But upgraded problems just turn into basic problems. It's like fixing a window is great, but maybe the next window you have is probably just not going to be as good as the first one it ever came with, right? Or patching something onto your ship is still going to have a problem because it is now a patch. And that's how this game kind of translates this thing. You are basically repairing your ship as you go throughout flights, dealing with problems, encountering the aspect of having to land. And of course, speaking of landing, the other cool thing too about this, this deck building aspect is that you cannot just simply push your luck like Mystic Veil and stop when you feel it's needed. You have to kind of stop before you think it's needed and then the landing does the rest. It'll make you drop two more, which could potentially end your flight and make you suffer a bit. But it's always still better to try and land than to just be flying out in the sky and all your engines blow. That can cause some serious problems. And so that is how it translates in this game. What I also love about this game is the way flights work. You're not just simply flying, getting points, next turn you're flying again and getting more points. It's all about doing the best singular flight. And it doesn't matter if it's done on the first, second, third, or even fourth round. It makes no difference. And if you can get to 40, the game can end early. You can actually end this game on round three, depending on the luck you get from drawing the cards from the upgrade deck, as well as the utilization of the different flight cards and hero abilities that you'll be having throughout the game. Another thing I love about this game is the fact that you are going to be not only manipulating the cards in your deck with the hero powers, but also the hero powers that focus on working with the rondelle. Sometimes those cards will let you actually land on the same space as another player, still keeping with order, meaning that you're always going to be in the front when you do that, and that's like giving that next player, the person in the back, the opportunity to go next. But there's also ways to make spaces, any spaces. So there's a lot of ways to not only manipulate your flight, but also have a passability that can function in any way, shape, or form, and manipulate the rondelle. So everything's very seamless, and it all works really simply. How each round works is really easy too, as these guys go along the board, and they come back here in their order, and you move the next round, you pay everybody out for how far they got, and then of course, you once again rinse and repeat. It's a nice feeling of just like understanding how the game works after literally the first round of play. And you obviously understand that you wanna get as far as you can, in one round. Uh, the artwork. The artwork for this game is wonderful. I really, really love the simplicity of it. I love the idea of it's your, your plane starting down on the grass and moving up into the sky and seeing how far you can travel. And I love the idea of my characters moving around the city, gathering items and resources and new heroes to help join in the flight. And so it, it all like culminates to a really, really well told story. Also, utilizing real life characters that helped our uh, aeronautics division uh, be able to create the wonderful planes that we now see in the, the sky today is really, really cool. Components, as you can see, are very nice. All the cards have um, the same shape and back when you put them in your deck. And if they don't, they're a separate size and also have a separate back, which makes it a lot easier to know what goes in your deck and what doesn't. And it's just a really nice experience. I really, really enjoyed this game. I loved using the different powers. I loved using the different heroes and the different ways in which you can like manipulate the flight or gain bonuses. I love how each of the characters are not just like a bonus ability, but it's an ability that focuses on one specific thing. Like for instance, the Wright brothers, as you go, you might not actually want to go to your full potential because your next flight will not give you the benefit of your hero if you do not go farther. And so you're always being challenged to push yourself just a little more before you hit that very end and hopefully you hit 40 because that's almost a guaranteed victory if you can do that before anybody else. Few little negatives, actually only one really. And the one negative is this deck here, this deck of bonus cards. These guys are going to have a range of between I believe uh, 2 to 5 and your deck starts with 1s and negatives or negative ones. There, there are ones that have a negative effect and ones, right? Uh, and these are just positives. All these cards are just positive numbers. They just help you fly farther. And when you draw them, like when you spend that money, okay, I'm going to spend a bunch of coins and draw a bunch of these cards and choose them. You'll get more variety in the different value that you can have. What I would like to see is if the deck maybe reduced the number of the higher cards and kind of allowed each of the cards to have a unique effect, similar to the upgraded 
flight problem deck, where in this one here it says, you have to do this specific thing or you're gonna have to descend this next turn. Or you, uh, if this is your next one that like does, uh, if you, this is your first problem that you have, you'll be forced to suffer two explosions as opposed to just one. Or if the next card added to your flight is a basic one card, it's not even counted or it's removed. And so there's all these different types of cards that you can utilize by trying to get rid of them to get basic flight problems, but the upgraded cards are just simply numbers. And sometimes it doesn't feel good where if I spend three and my opponent spends three and I happen to get two fives and they just happen to get two twos or three, you know, and that's just the best they can do. It's basically a little bit too much on the luck side. It's not a huge huge deal for me. It doesn't like take me out of the game, it doesn't make me like less interested. I just thought it would be cooler if some of these cards were to say something like, if you have an explosion on one side and on the other of this two card, now it's worth five. Or maybe if there are no explosions so far and when you land you only have one, then this card is worth six. And so there's like different little aspects to where I would choose to kind of like utilize these cards here to set up my deck. My flight things let me like remove cards from my top of my deck or move them around to let me kind of work with the upgrades that I have gained throughout the game. Whereas opposed to what I'm basically trying to do in a flight is get the highest numbers on top and get all the nasty stuff on bottom and play them out. It's not bad. It's not really even a super negative. It's just something I would like to see upgraded in the game. It's like the only one little thing I would have liked to have seen is some unique text on those cards. But overall, other than that, this game is wonderful. It's excellent. It's very straightforward. It's very streamlined. There's a ton of mechanics I love in the game. I love rondelles. I love pusher luck and I love deck building. It all works seamlessly in this game. It's light enough to teach anybody. It's quick enough for anybody to enjoy. And it's a game that is very vibrant in theme and story and you feel it if you feel it as you play out this game moving around the town gathering all the stuff that you want and all the people that you need and then trying to go on a flight and get as far as you can and whoever gets the farthest by the basically the time they die is the winner it's the person who's actually gone the farthest in the game excellent really really cool excellent first in flight is excellent i'm gonna give you my seal of approval hands down it's good i'm keeping this game it's mine you can't have it Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game First in Flight. And if you want your own copy, you can go ahead and check it out down below. There's a link down below in the description for you to pick up First in Flight. And if you'd like, if you're extra interested, you think we deserve it, maybe you watched one or two of our videos now. Maybe you appreciate all the extra work I've been putting into my body. Lost 15 pounds, getting a little farther. I know, I know, it's a little humble brag there. Uh, then you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Subscribe button, bell notification button, and uh, we'd greatly appreciate it. We put out videos usually Monday through Thursday, sometimes Friday, and we have a live stream on Sundays, 6.30 p.m. PST. We do a whatnot stream on Wednesdays, but you can go and check out the notifications when you get that. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to being first in flight without you next time.